Right. So, uh, great. First of all, uh, thank you for taking the time to do this. Thank you for having me. Right. And I was wondering, uh, what age did you start getting involved in music? Well, it was it was always present. I always really liked art in general, and I always right. had a passion for just old music and listening to music. My my household was one that was always filled with with noise. Um, so I always really enjoyed music. There was never like a moment where I specifically chose to focus on it, but it was always mm. just something present in the back of my mind on my day to day. And then at one point, it just it just became the only thing that I thought about. Right. And this kind of then ties into what I was going to say next. But what age did you, um, oh, sorry, like, uh, did you ever like think of pursuing another career, basically, is what I was about to say? Yeah, well, I've been working since I was 15 um, right. in Brazil. Uh, I did a sort of like Brazilian participation in a television show I was only there for like a couple of episodes but that was really my start mm -hmm. um and I quickly realized it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do that music was more what I wanted to do so I kind of shifted away from that and focused on music right and you mentioned being from Brazil originally so what have you found the hardest about living in a different country the Oh my God, I miss so much about home, but it's the very specific things. Like I miss, I miss the food and I miss the hominess of people. I miss just the way people act in Brazil, I, like the, the culture, the culture I, I really miss. Right. I definitely am aware that I am a foreigner here at all times. Like it feels like it to me. There's still some words I don't understand. The culture is a little different and I definitely, especially in times like this, just miss being home. Yeah, so is it only in the past couple of years that you made the move over, or was it a while ago? Um, well, it, about like five, six years ago, which is definitely right. a while ago. Yeah. But uh, I'm 23, so most of my life has been in Brazil. There, it's a very short period that I've been here. Right, compared of course. To the um, so who would you say has um, influenced or inspired you as an artist? Oh my God, so many. Currently, my biggest obsession is David Bowie and Prince and just right. Amy Winehouse and Grace Jones. I've been really, really allowing myself to be inspired by them right now. Prince is my favorite artist, so I always will have him on my list of inspirations. Right. I mean, yeah, he's, he's an all-time great, for sure. Um, just a friend of hard work and dedication and just talent he's incredibly 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 genius A absolutely yeah and um so you're beginning your um career in the age of social media and i was wondering how important do you think using those platforms are um if you're starting out in, in this uh time extremely but it also changes the way i think that people consume me like just entertainment Nowadays, right. like I think people are very much seeing music. And I, what I mean by that is it's very hard for people to discover new music organically through sound. Like I feel like for so many times you discover an artist on social media or you watch their videos and that's how your first contact with an artist has become. I feel like that's how a lot of people have found my music. It's been through platforms like Snapchat and platforms like Instagram. And so they have the, they know what you look like and how you, your personality before they know your music, which isn't mm. how it used to be. I feel like a lot of times the music came first and I don't really know how I feel about that. I think that sometimes it's great and sometimes it's, it's got, it's got its pros and cons, just like every, um, every other generation of entertainment, um, tools, I guess is, is the word. Right. For sure. And obviously, um, we're living in the middle of the uh, of the COVID nineteen pandemic. And how much has that impacted what you had planned for twenty twenty? So much, so much. Wow, oh. my entire year got shifted. Um, I put a single out actually the week that COVID really broke out in California and New York. Right. So it really did change my plans. But oh, sorry. Excuse me, guys. 
I'm recording. Silence, please. My kitties are making noise. One second. Ah, uh, sure. That's what it's like to be at home. You just have to. Yeah. You no, know, part of being at home. Um, but uh, for me, <laughs> yeah, I have a little tiger. For me, it's 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 a little just challenging because I had all these plans for live performances and, and shows and just different places I wanted to go to play. And now I won't be able to, I, I wasn't able to do any of that. And I had to just like accept that most of my contact will be online. And that really definitely changed my plans because I, oh. I had things I wanted to do and um, fans I wanted to see. And unfortunately, I had to miss out on that. So that, that was definitely upsetting to me at first. But we do what we can. Mm. And um, based on what you were saying earlier, I have an idea what you might say here. But if you could pick any performer, dead or alive, to be your dream duet, who would you want that to be? Prince. Mm. Actually, mm, I don't know. I feel like I don't think I could keep it together. Right. I don't think I would keep it together. Um, right. So at the moment, you're working with Corey Rooney, who's also collaborated with names such as Jennifer Lopez, Mariah Carey, and Destiny's Child, to name a few. And how much uh, pressure do you think it's been to follow in such successful footsteps? It's not so much that there's pressure. It's just you're aware of the caliber of person that is deciding to, to, to give you their time. Sure. And it's more just like an awareness of how valuable that time is and that I do have to do my best to make sure that I am respecting it and that there is no other way he could be spending his time. So I need to work my hardest to, to prove that it's a, it's a worthy uh, thing that he's doing, spending like all this time and in, in investing his time into me, you know? Right. And, and he's a living yeah. legend. He's so talented, so incredibly, incredibly just like masterful. Watching him work is insane. Yeah. Being in the studio with him is something else. And every time I, I've been working with him for about five years now, and it still amazes me. Mm. And uh, you've also appeared on the, uh, you mentioned being on Snapchat, the Snapchat series Endless. And how did you find that experience? Um, well, actually, my friend was uh, worked f with them and oh. knew that they were looking for a girl that exactly matched my description, like who I was, my personality. Right. And so they called me for an interview just to see if it would be a good fit. And it, it definitely was. And from that, we shot all of December and the show came out, I think, early March, late mm. February. Something like that. Right. And outside of music, uh, what are your other hobbies or passions? Painting. Painting right. so much. Um, and I spend so much. I hang out with my cats a lot, honestly. I think that they're great. I love them so much. I have one fl fluffy, fluffy, fluffy white ball. And the other one is a just a little spotted, tidy kitten. Right. So I lot of my time with them just relaxing and reading I've really found that isolation has led me into creation and so right. I do need to respect my space and just respect um the process that I need and it, it turns out that I do need a lot of solitude to create and to really delve into what I need to say musically so I've just mm. been allowing myself to just do that during quarantine so far Right. And um, a big part of what I talk about on this with this platform is TV and film. So I was wondering, what have you been watching or binge watching since the pandemic started? Succession. I've right. been really Succession. It's my favorite, favorite, favorite show. Uh, it's incredible. I could watch Jeremy Strong on Succession on repeat and not ever get bored. Right. That's, there's actually been a popular answer for that question since I've been asking it. That's come, someone's come up a lot. I'll have to check it out. Really? Yeah. Like it, it, a few people have said that actually, which is kind of which is kind of strange. But yeah, I guess I guess it's a good sign. 
must be good. I love, I love Succession. But I will say, and it's my guilty pleasure, I have been binge watching Selling Sunset on Netflix. Right. I'm, I mean, I, I have a soft spot for reality TV, but to be honest, seeing such tough, beautiful women, it's such a tough industry. And like the, the way that they portray them really working hard for, for what they want to do in real estate. I love it. And like, I get that it's reality. So they're all portrayed as gossipy and even a little bit mean, but Mm. I disagree. And I think that Christine, who is supposed to be like the villain of the show is actually amazing. And I want to be her friend. If she's listening to this, hit me up, girl. You're cool as hell. Right. And the last question I've got here is if you could share a message or sentiment to fans of yours during this time, what would it be? Ooh, that's a good one. If I could send a message to my fans. I'd say like allow yourself to breathe and Mm. then breathe again because it's just so easy to get lost, especially because time doesn't feel real um life doesn't feel real it can get really frustrating to go like to go to target it's empty you can barely go there's a line out front people are wearing masks it's just so easy to get overwhelmed and to freak out and to lose sight of hope and i feel like whenever that happens i just breathe properly like take like a really really deep breath and then let it out with all your strength and i feel so but so much better after and that's something that anyone can do like it doesn't take uh it just takes a nose to breathe.